Hey YouTube, welcome to the Off-Grid Mountain Homestead. Got a lot of questions the last couple of weeks uh, since the big you know, clown show balloon incident's been going on. A lot of questions about EMPs and would they affect solar power components and what would the effects be, what can you do to protect them, etc, etc. So like the old, old proverb, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. We're going to take it one bite at a time. Real nice, real slow. Cover one component uh per video to start with and then we'll go dive deeper into it as the series continues so it's gonna be a multi-part series and for reference in today's video we're going to be referring to a centralized inverter system we're not going to be talking about microinverters, any of that stuff i'm gonna to try to keep it basic to not lose anybody so with that said uh centralized inverter let me just clarify that for you, those of you who are not aware that's your standard off the grid setup you know you got your inverter dc from the panels battery bank got kind of set up so that's what we're going to be referring to today and before we even get into the video we need to talk about the emp itself what is the emp it's high altitude electromagnetic pulse from man-made versions from nuclear weapons detonated high in the atmosphere you got three pulses e1 e2 and e3 well mr off-grid which one's the most dangerous to my solar power system if i'm off-grid well if you're off-grid the e1 pulse is going to be the hardest to deal with it can produce up to 50,000 volts per meter of ionization because it ionizes the electrons in the atmosphere from the gamma rays and it lasts nanoseconds. So you have to use transient voltage suppression protection to stop that. We'll get into all that further into the series, but that's the most dangerous one for your equipment that's this exposed. That's what's going to smoke your charge controllers, your inverters, and all that good stuff. Then there's the E2 pulse that you have to contend with. Well, the good thing about the E2 pulse, it's more similar to lightning strikes. You can deal with that one. You know, that's not as big of a deal. It lasts in milliseconds to a second. You can use your standard lightning protection for that. That should deal with that, you know, with majority of systems without major issue. So the E2 pulse, we're not going to worry too much about what it. What about the E3 pulse? Well, the E3 pulse is the slow one. It's the one that messes up the Earth's magnetic field. So that's the one that uh, got the big long runs of wires and stuff like that on the grid. That's the one that's gonna mess up everything that's tied into the grid or big long antennas, ham radio antennas, stuff like that. That's the big long pulse that lasts, you know, multiple seconds into minutes. So it swells up and swells down and similar to a coronal mass ejection CME style event. But off-grid systems have the benefit they're not connected to big long antenna wires. They do have long, long runs sometimes on the panels, but we'll talk about that more too, how to stop that, protect that. But today's video is just, just about panels. Yeah, I'm using old Flex Solar here to help me in today's video because I can't disconnect any of my panels at the moment because we're under good sun and making lots of power. So we're just going to use these as a test mule for today. So you want me to give it to you straight, right? Okay, so let's, let's play scenario for a minute. I say this is a whatever panel, this panel, any panel you got. You don't have it connected to anything. It's just sitting there in the yard on a rack or, you know, there's no wiring connected to it. It's sitting on a pallet. It's in your garage, in the back of your pickup truck, wherever it might be, on top of a camper, wherever you got it. There's no wires connected to it. And the big spark goes off and you get popped with 50,000 volts. You're right up under it. You get smoked. Now these panels are going to survive. There's been multiple laboratory tests of solar panels with no wiring attached to them and they survive doesn't harm them one bit as long as you don't have any wires connected to them and they're not under a load. So if they're just sitting there like they are right here, they could spark it off right over top of us and these panels will still be good to go. So you didn't have it wired up. You had them in storage. You're lucky. The charge controller is probably done. You're probably not going to have a charge controller that works because the little boards in there, that'll get fried. So now there's much debate on whether charge controllers will work if they're turned off. Some tests show that the charge controllers are good if they're off and disconnected. Uh, some tests show that it just depends on the, the quality of the charge controller. Some of them will, will smoke out, some of them won't. So there's a lot of variables with that. So just keep some spares, spare parts. Keep spare parts and keep them protected. I'm going to go over that more in a future video as well, how to protect your spare parts. Charge controller is no good. That's okay. We still got, got voltage out of the panels. They're still good. We checked them. I'll show you how to do all that in an upcoming video, so I'm keeping it simple today. So all these wire leads are less than three foot. That's the key. The tests show under three foot. They're likely to survive. Now, if you had them disconnected completely here at the terminals, you're nearing 100% success rate and survivability from an EMP. 
All right, let's go to another scenario. Say you were way at the edge of the blast radius. You didn't get the big E1 pulse. The E3 pulse didn't get you. None of the pulses got you strongly. You know, you got a, you got a glance and blow. But you notice your panels and charge, your charge control is working. You notice your, your amperage is way down. You're like, what could be causing that? The panels are still making, making power, but I'm just not getting any amperage and stuff out of it. Well, it could be your bypass diodes. That's the bypass diodes. For reference, that's the terminal block. So if your wires aren't melted down and all your connections are good, these little bypass diodes right here could be the problem that your panels are not producing the current that they're rated for. So if they get, get a big pulse or a lightning strike, it can burn these little bypass diodes up. Well, what's a bypass diode? How does that work? Well, a bypass diode, let's, let's simplify it down. Think of a bypass diode like a plumbing check valve. It only lets voltage go in one direction. And why do you have a bypass diode? Well, I'm gonna show you here in just a second. And what do bypass diodes do? As you can see, this panel is in full sun right now. Are the bypass diodes active? No, they're not. This is off grid if you will shade the upper third of the panel. The panels are broken off into cells, quadrants, divided out. So if you get partial shading, like right there, well, the bypass diode allows the voltage to go out of this cell. It doesn't make a deadhead. The voltage can go through and still produce power off a portion of the panel in simple terms. Now the bypass diodes are back out of play. Got full sun, no shading. So let's imagine a little leaf comes in. See if I can, if I can catch it with my arm shadow here. Here we go. My hand's a leaf. You know, there's a tree limb. Depends on how much shading bypass diodes come into play on that as well to let the voltage go around the shaded spot and still produce power on your panel. Now we're going to shade it from the top. And this bypass diode does not help with this type of shading. So this is important. This is multi multifaceted today. This is kind of solar advice plus EMP. But anyhow, Mrs. Off Grid, if you'll shade the top third of the panel, if you get shading like this, your bypass diodes aren't going to help you at all. So your panel is, is pretty much squat right now. Your, your amperage and voltage is way down, the way it's set up like that. So set your panels like this, not like that. You might be asking where the blocking diodes are. Well, a lot of panels don't have blocking diodes, especially more modern ones. Your blocking diodes are usually in the electronics in your charge controllers or all-in-one inverters. The blocking diodes prevent voltage from a higher source, like a battery, from flowing backwards out through the panels at night. But usually your charge controller or inverter has that. But again, there are panels on the market that have blocking diodes, but majority of them do not. So just for reference. And so today's video was just the intro to this series as a very basic rundown. I tried not to go too far into technical details so I didn't lose anybody. I know there are probably a lot of questions. Uh, go ahead and put them in the comments. I might not answer all the questions in the comments because there's a lot of upcoming content involving EMPs and solar power stuff, solar power equipment, power boxes. I'm going to talk about transit voltage suppressors. I'm going to talk about line filters. We're going to talk about high saturation for high chokes, grounding. Uh, what kind of surge protectors to use, uh, on and on and on. I'm going to talk about, I think the next one I'll probably do is the uh, lithium batteries. A lot of people are worried about their lithium batteries. So I think that'll probably be the next one in the line. But anyhow, uh, questions, comments, go ahead and let them rip. Uh, if you're not subscribed, we'd greatly appreciate a subscription from you. And please hit that like button. I'd greatly appreciate that. Thank you for watching the Offer Mountain Homestead. Hope you all have a nice day.